so students in the last lecture we have to completed our chapter number 4 which is design of plate gutter now in the last lecture we have to discuss about what is the difference between when the plate gutter having intermediate stiffener or not so basically when the plate gutters designed for unstiffened plate gutter it means there is no any stiffeners are provided then we have to provide it the value of k is 150 mm when we have to provide it a vertical stiffener it means a transfer stiffener then we have to put down the value of k is in the range of 180 to 220 and the third example which is not cover because the only change in the value of k and if the plate gutter is designed for vertical as well as horizontal stiffeners then we have to put down the value of k is 250 okay so students this is the end of our last lecture okay so now we are moving further to our new chapter which is a design of industrial building so students it is already discussed that in our introduction section that this is the very most important chapter for gtu point of view because in this chapter there will be two chapters are there first one is design of gantry gutter which is already discussed that okay and second one is design of industrial building so this is our second last chapter of our course so students let us start our design of industrial building so students what is the in design of industrial buildings there is two types of examples are there in this chapter okay so first type of example we have to discuss that how much dead load how much live load and how much wind load is calculated while you have to design any structural component and second is you have to design for purling so what is purling so whenever you have to check the different components of industrial building then we will discuss that what is purling what is eave what is ridge what is column so all this component will be discussed later in this lecture okay so students the first question is what is industrial building so generally industrial buildings are made up of rcc or steel or composite structure depending on their height and which type of industries are there okay so you can see that industrial buildings are low rise steel structure okay yes it is always a low rise steel structures because if we are increase the height then the wind load and all the loads are heavy house workshop or industries and characterized by their low height and absence of interior wall and partitions because if we are provided our interior wall and partition then it will be obstructions okay so students the next question is how many types of industrial buildings are there so generally industrial buildings are classified into two categories first one is normal or simple industrial buildings and another is special types of industrial buildings it means in special type of industrial building special purpose is useful and in normal industrial building or general industries are there okay so students now if we are planning or designing any industrial building so first of all we have to knowledge of these following all the things so this question is asked in gq like what is the features is kept in your mind when you have to design or planning any industrial building so students our first is site information it means you have to made a industrial building in which area at which location 
what is the peripheral residential area what is the size of peripheral building what is the size of peripheral industrial size okay next is soil condition because whenever we have to find out and whenever we have to design for pedestal footing so the soil condition and soil bearing capacity is most important things next is future expansion plans because if owner is featuring that if for future expansion plan then you have to design a industrial building for more factor of safety okay next is plant layout and workflow what is the workflow how many times to complete this industrial building next is preferred base size bay means center to center distance between two columns is called as bay next is crane type and its capacity this crane type and capacity will depend upon the category of industry for which purpose you have to design okay for which purpose you have to made up your industry okay next is availability of raw material because if your raw material is not coming in from the nearer area then your transportation cost will be high okay so you have to design or you have to made up and you have to design for industrial building where raw material is easily available okay next is roofing side cladding and wall material so students for roofing there is generally basically two types of materials are there first one is gi sheet gi means galvanized iron sheet and second is acc sheet okay these two sheets are available and generally useful in the market for roofing cladding and side material next is heating ventilator air conditioning equipment loads it means if we are providing any ventilations are there you can see that on any industry at the top there is one ventilation which is continuously rounded rounded okay so what is the load of that material whenever we have to provide it for ventilation purpose next is parking facility preferable fabrication availability of waste proposal and sanitary facilities and at last what is the budget and project schedule okay so this all the things will keep in your mind whenever you have to planning and structural framing of industrial building next which are the factors consider while you have to design any industrial building so students there are number of factors are keep in your mind whenever you have to design for industrial building like if you are provided industrial building is on main road or at the long distance from the main road like other is your raw material is available or not what is the electricity water supply facility all these components are very most important so now we are moving further to the factor affecting or factor which you have to consider while you have to designing for any industrial building okay so the next question is factor consider while selection site for industrial building so first one is your site should be located on artesian roads artesian roads it means on main roads second is facility like water supply and electricity these two are the major requirement of any plant whether it is rcc steel or composites okay next is local availability of raw material and it is already discussed that for transportation cost and it affect of overall cost of the project topography of an area it means your industry is located on plain surface or on a sloped surface and generally any industry is located on a plain surface if the sloped area are there then 
first of all you have to check and you have to made up a plain area next is soil condition with respect to foundation design and it is already discussed that in this point that we have to check for foundation purpose view next is waste disposal facilities transportation facilities these two facilities are important for overall budget cost sufficient space for storage of raw material yes this is the very most important factors while we have to design for expansion or any industrial building next is space for future expansion okay so students this is the main important factors you have to keep in your mind while you have to selection of any industrial building now you can see that this is your industrial building so what is the components so you can see that this is a steel column this component is called as principal rafter it is called as pr for short form it is pr principal rafter this called as eave purlin e a v e eave purlin and all these horizontal members which support the roof material is called as purlin so these all are the purlins and in this chapter we have two types of examples are there first one is to find out dead load live load and wind load and another is design of this purlin okay so students this is your eave purlin and this is the topmost portion is called as ridge purlin r i d g e ridge purlin okay so all the components will be discussed later in the next slide so what is the component so you can see that this is end wall guards okay this is side wall guards this is rafter it is already discussed that this is principal rafter this is eave strut you can see that this is eave purlin this is intermediate purlin okay this is ridge ventilator this is ventilator and this is called a ridge point it is already discussed that okay so students this all are the major component while we have to design any industrial building so a major component and what is the function of it will be discussed in the next slide so first is span what is span so this portion the distance between two main columns are called as span so you can see that what is the definition of span so it is center to center distance between to support of a roof is called as span so this distance center to center distance between these two columns is called as span second is rise so what is rise rise is this is a bottom member okay and this is the topmost this is the ridge point and this is tie member t i e this is tie member and this is ridge point so this horizon this vertical length is called as rise so what is rise so you can see that this is called a rise next is pitch so generally pitch is a ratio of rise divided by span by 2 i repeat pitch is equal to rise divided by span by sorry rise by span okay r upon l this rise divided by span it is pitch next is slope so whenever you have to find out this slope then this angle will be alpha or beta or gamma whatever you have to think it so if we have to consider that this is alpha then this is rise and this is span so tan alpha is equal to rise divided by span by 2 so we will get our answer of slope which is angle theta or alpha okay next is purlin so 
This purlin is the supporting member of the roof material. Next is rafter. So this inclined member is called as a rafter, principal rafter. You can see that this is principal rafter. Okay, this is not important. Next is panel. So you can see that in this member, this is one panel. This is one column. Another column is provided over here. Then this is called as one panel. Okay, there is number of column in this direction. And the center to center distance between two columns is called as panel. Next is B. Similarly, panel is equal to B. Next is ridge line. So you can see that in this figure, this is ridge line. Topmost portion is called as ridge line. Okay. And next is principal rafter. So as discussed earlier that this is principal rafter. And last is eaves. So what is eave? So you can see that in this figure, last this is the last member and this is also a last member so the last member of industrial building is called as eu member okay and the topmost member is called as a ridge member so students this is the all the components of a roof truss one member is spacing of roof truss so in this figure we have to assume that one column is provided over here then this difference this distance is called as spacing of roof truss okay if this is one column and another column is provided over here then the distance between two columns which is also called as panel is called as spacing of roof truss okay next is main type what is main type so this is uh, called as main type next is sag type so there will be my mistake that i will consider this is my tie line tie but this is our main tie and this is our sag tie all the ties are sag tie okay ridge line is already discussed that and purlin is also discussed okay so students this is our all the components of roof truss materials okay so students in the next lecture we are moving further to the panel points now what is panel points and how to load transfer from one material to another material will be discussed in the next lecture okay so students this is the end of our today's session thank you